All right. And welcome to another edition of the Defender Roundtable, where we talk about some of the hottest topics going on in the Houston area and around the world. But today we're talking about one in the Houston area with one of what a lot of folks call a Houston landmark. Yes, we are weighing in on the turkey leg, leg hut troubles. And boy, do they have some troubles. I love the turkey leg hut. It is an icon in, in Houston, though we have somebody on this panel who has never set foot in there or had a bite of a turkey leg. Hmm. Lord have mercy. What kind of Negro is that? Yeah, that's me. That's me. I've, I've never been there. Um, but I do remember when they first opened because um, in that in that complex, my son's barber was right there at the at the edge. But they grew so much, they kicked my son's barber to the curb. He had to find a new a new spot. So I've seen them grow, and I've been meaning to get by there. But I don't know. It looks like I may not be able to do it now. May not have a chance now. Yes, the Turkey Leg Hut is closed. They say it's temporarily closed because of some health code violations from the city. Um, but let's weigh in. Um, it seems like trouble seems to continually follow the turkey leg hut, which is a tragedy. I hate to see any black business um, have a hard time. But why do you think it is that they continue to have these troubles? Terrence? That's, that's a good question. I mean, but it just goes to, I think, um, to this I, this thing that, you know, just because you have a great idea and even, and even a great product doesn't necessarily mean, doesn't necessarily translate to business success. And clearly these people just that didn't have, have never seemed to be able to to run this this business efficiently. I mean, when you look at the, the amounts of lawsuits, the fact that they almost went into you know got into, went into default on their rent pretty much immediately. I mean, and 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 we all, all of us who gone to the turkey leg cut. I mean, we we remember the days of the long lines, uh, you know, the the impossible uh, reservation system that they had set up because they had so much business, and so you say. If anybody's gonna make you gonna be able to make it, you would think that they would. I would like to say one more thing too about a SWAT and not have it going. I mean, if, you know, we go we go question your black card, brother. <laughs> well, you know, we can. Um, they have been having trouble. There was some issue with the with the co with the owners. Um, they were formerly married, Nakia Price and Lynn Price, Nakia Holmes now. Um, the last time we ran a story, they did reach out to us to kind of clarify that um, Lynn Price is not a co-founder of the Turkey Leg Hut. Uh, so we we don't want to get into all of that. We're just talking about this this um, business in the community that we hate to see going, you know, falling apart. They are have filed bankruptcy. They say they owe more than five million dollars to nineteen creditors, and it's just one problem after another. Laura, you weigh in. I mean, the last time I visited the Turkey Leg Hut was during the pandemic. And uh, even during that time, it was quite packed. Um, I would say during my time there, I actually enjoyed it. I mean, I didn't have, I, and I'm coming, this is coming from a transplant experience. You know, I heard about Turkey Leg Hut. I said, I figured I'd visit it. And, you know, the vibes and everything people described that place to be was what it was at that time. Um, it's very unfortunate just to hear uh, a black owned business go down this bad, um, especially with the, I believe, 34 health care, uh, health code violations, uh, their tumultuous uh, divorce um, in the public eye. And when you can't even handle you guys as a team in the public eye, everything else just starts to crumble. And then on top of that, just its location. I know the people who live around there are happy about this. Uh, the consistent... Um, complaints, noise complaints um, around that area. I'm really not sure if that's a zoning thing out here, but I, I'm sure they're they're singing their praises that this this news to this black business is finally happening, um, which is quite unfortunate. Um, yeah, like for me, I'm just gonna say from my experience, I haven't had a bad time, you know? So I that, that's what I know I can speak on, um, but it, it, it's quite sad. Yeah, just you know- a little from pushback. If you ahead, mind, just a little pushback on what, what Terrence said about them being able to run a business. Um, my son was in elementary school when they opened. He's now a, a junior in high school. So they've been doing something right to 
to at least last this long. But I do hear I do hear what you're saying, and also I have my black card right here. So yeah. well, well, uh, I think that's the most important thing you just said right there is, is your black card. But but no, but seriously, I mean, you know, you you're right. I mean, they clearly have figured out a way to did they figure out a way to make it work. I mean, you know, keep making it work. But a lot of it seems like it was smoke and mirrors. I mean, when you really look at the amount of debt, how they've never paid a lot of creditors during this time. I mean, you know, you got investors and everybody asking for money. I mean, asking for money back. I mean, they, I mean, the, the, the fortune people talked about how, you know, one day, you know, uh, the wife, she called and, and hysterically because she felt like, you know, they were about to close her down and they had to funnel some money to her real quick to get that taken care of. I mean, so to me, those are all signs that, you know, that it just, that the business part of it wasn't right ever. But I mean, I think sometimes you can, you can, you know, kind of squeeze through and ease through the cracks. And to Laura's point, yeah, I mean, I think that the um, the neighbors are, are definitely happy because, you know, we you, you've just seen so many issues with that place. I'm, I've never seen anything like this before. It started out with the, the turkey legs and the, and the smoke. Uh, the, the people around it, I mean, they couldn't park, you know, in their communities during, you know, during the weekends. It was just impossible because of the traffic. You know, they've had fires, they've had, you know, some of that, a litany of everything. I mean, that could go, you just haven't heard a lot of positive about this business and, it, and for it to be such a great restaurant. I mean, I'm with Laura. I, I, I loved every experience I had. It became kind of a go-to for me when I have family and friends who come in town. And I mean, that's like the first thing that they want to go and, you know, and check out. I mean, they usually don't know that you can't pronounce the full name of it, but that's where they want to be. Yeah. And, 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 they, and they didn't disappoint. It, it started in 2015, um, so it has been here a minute, and it started as a pop-up in the parking lot across the street from the um, Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, and they have really, you know, made their way with this business, but I don't know if it grew too much too fast. Um, both um, Nakia and Lynn, you know, were, were very vocal and very front and center in the business, but you're right, it has been plagued with problems from the very beginning. Now you have their their split, you have ongoing lawsuits, they've had two fires, you got the competing Oyster Hut pop-up, and then like you said, now they're being sued by James Fortune and his wife, um, he is a gospel singer here in Houston who invested on social media, there are friends who say they loan money. So it is like it's one problem after another plaguing um, the turkey leg hut. But we'll we'll see what happens. Do you think they're closed for good? I can't, I mean, I hope not. I mean, but I, I but it just wouldn't surprise me if they're if they can't reopen because I mean, you know, right now it's the fight between chapter eleven and chapter seven, and which one of those. And I mean, and people clearly want them to sell assets in order to try to recoup some money. So I, when, when you have that going on, I just think it's going to be hard for them to come back. I hope not because feel? black folk have yeah. so much love for the Turkey leg hut. Y'all remember when the gentrifiers tried to run them out of business. Yeah. Um, that just, that just made black folk love that institution, you know, all the more. So I hope not for that reason, but also so I can finally get, get in there and get some of that food. Laura, what were you about to say? Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, I mean, they've been in the fight this long, especially with people who were against them. And then you have the Oyster Hut that you mentioned. I, they have a lot of ideas. I, I, yeah, they're, they're down bad right now, but I feel like another hut's going to pop up somewhere. <laughs> and we're right. Gonna if you've been following them, I wouldn't count them out. Now, the Turkey Leg Hut did post um, on their uh social media that we're working on making your turkey leg hut experience even better. So stay tuned for what's coming next. Trust us. It's worth the waste. The worth, the, it's worth the wait. That's what their Instagram post said. So we will see. They said they closed for renovations. The, the, the state, the city says otherwise, but somehow I think they'll come back. Now they may be called the, the turkey legs at the hut or something, but <laughs> I think they'll or, be or maybe a turkey wing hut. How about a turkey <laughs> wing hut? A turkey wing hut, turkey parts. Yeah, there you go, there you go. All That's right. Funny. <laughs> well, that is it for this week's roundtable discussion. We're rooting for the turkey leg hut. We're rooting for, for everything black. So good luck to them, and we'll keep you updated. We'll see you next week on the Defender Roundtable. <laughs>